Pick six carryover time at Keeneland Racecourse. Ed DeRosa, Sarah Obadwe for Horse Racing Nation. And Sarah, we are proud to be sponsored by our very own Super Screener. Great stuff on there. Heading into the Kentucky Derby, you got some bonuses if you signed up to get your copy early, including a couple of races over last weekend mm -hmm. and the weekend before with the Lexington. Now updated for the most up-to-date information about all these contenders as they uh, continue throwing curveballs at us with Classic Causeway back in. Yes. Early voting, maybe, maybe in or out. Maybe not. Pioneer Medina in, now out. Hokey Pokey. But... Once you sign up for it, you get all the updates. So right. risk-free in that regard. Churchill Downs open Saturday, Derby a week after that. But we do have three days left of the Keeneland meeting, and it kicks off in a big way, $49,000 plus carryover in the pick six, and it's not an easy sequence. No, this is a tough one. I think we agree a little bit. We have some <laughs> uh, We have some favorite we're against in one of the races. We do. Even with some short, short fields in some of these, still a very complicated sequence. Um, I know that we are both playing with over $90 tickets, which is outside of my norm. So it's going to be paying well, most likely, to whoever does hit it. And hopefully that's one of us or both of us. Yeah, I think with a few 16-horse fields, pre-scratches, they're not going to be that big when they go in the gate. But a lot of horses to suss out. And although our tickets are in that, I think yours is 96. Mm -hmm. Mine's 108. In one race, I'm single, you're too deep, and don't have my single. This is the fourth leg race seven. And of the three horses we have covered, none are the favored three. So, yes, opportunity, but be expensive depending on how many opinions you have. Because if we were to combine our tickets right away, we're tripling the cost of them. So, definitely a, a tough sequence. I did want to start with leg five, race seven. Uh, because I am single to Silent Disco, who definitely, uh, I think the short field is going to help that one. Uh, there isn't a lot of pace in my mind, and two of these are dirt routes, and as we can take a look in the track trends tools, you don't necessarily want to be on the lead anyway, but there's such a lack of pace here. I thought Silent Disco definitely had the best opportunity to at least control the proceedings here. Definitely like better than the favorite, but I'm on the outside, and I know you look to the inside. I did. I am going with the one and the two in that race instead of number three, who is likely to be your heavy, heavy favorite in Down Cold for Steve Asmussen. Um, with the one, I think just getting a little bit of class relief, this one has faced some Kentucky Derby contenders in the past. And then the two ran fourth at around 50-1 to one last time at Keeneland, so had the recency and to start over the track and may be able to continue improving off of that effort. <clears throat> but we are both against that heavy, heavy favorite in there. But um, are we really starting halfway or almost home in this sequence? You want to start from the beginning? No. <laughs> I like starting with what I think is the strongest opinion. We're both against oh. number three. I mean, that to me is something you can build off of. Well, let's just end it now. I mean, <laughs> well, I was actually going to go to race eight, the last leg of the sequence, because that I felt like was maybe our most agreement. I was willing to single number four, blinkers off, gets back on the turf, Tyler Gaffleon. Little nervous about that one having been a money burner, but that was on synthetic. Like I said, back to turf, I see as a big positive. I really hope the sire moves is out sooner rather than later because turf route, maiden race, I'd love to see if maybe there's an angle there I'm missing. But for right now, I'm willing to lean on number four, and you're pretty shallow too in that race with that one on your ticket as well. Absolutely. I think that, you know, just the connections play on this one and the efforts on the synthetic. This horse just seems like she's a better horse than she used to be. She's also faced tougher company than she probably meets in here. Blinkers come off for this one as well. Maybe gets to kind of either sit up close or settle into a more of a comfortable rhythm and uh, kind of have things more her own way in this mile um, mile distance on the turf. But wasn't quite willing to single. Had to <laughs> include the Chad Brown that has faced all Kentucky Oaks contenders such as Nest, Nostalgic, and uh, who's the other one? Goddess of Fire as well. So. Getting on the turf for the first time for Chad Brown, couldn't leave this one off my ticket. I definitely uh, understand that. Which number is that? That's the nine. That's that the nine. Wrong. All right. You're on the nine. I'm on the four. You have both on your tickets. I just singled the four on mine. So that's the leg double, like you said. Why didn't we start at the beginning? I just thought we had a really strong 
opinion on the, the back third of the pick six, but obviously before we can get there, you got to get through the first four legs. And uh, that's where I went deep. I'm two by four by three by three. A couple of those, I feel like I could have went even deeper, but at some point you just got to take your stand and gamble a little bit uh, in the opening leg. I'm one, two, three. I think that about covers it, but uh, I mean, these are all competitive. I would say so with the exception kind of being the pie horse. I wouldn't really see that one getting into the winner's circle, and I'd probably put that one in the winner's circle <laughs> now as well, uh, possibly being the lone pace in here. But as you mentioned with our track trends tool, this track has been favoring horses that are either stalking or coming off the pace in general in dirt routes as well as turf routes, correct? Yes, that's so right. So the early speed kind of isn't – holding on in a lot of these longer races at Keeneland, which bodes well for my top choice in here, which is going to be the number one horse, my Barely. This horse four starts ago was facing Thomas Shelby, who's one of those hard-knocking older horses, has been stakes-faced all winter over at Oak Lawn, finished second to that one that day at a huge price and has been running consistently well since then. So getting the one hole in here, um, we'll probably take back that this horse is, you know, an eight-year-old veteran and hmm. knows his job. And then, for a horse that was going to be either stalking or closer to the pace, I went with the three as well. And, and Fortune's Fool, um, this one just made sense in here, but I see that you included the two as well. What do you like about that one? I did, uh, yeah, I put on top, and I believe part of it was uh, looking at the PPs I use, which are Brisnet. You and I complement each other in that regard uh, using different products. But uh, using my Always software, Dirt Routes, the top – Prime Power Horse is a flat bet profit at the meet. And I thought they were pretty evenly matched, the one, two, and three here. And the Deuce had the Prime Power Edge, and I don't think will be favored either. So liking all three in a short field, I don't love being that deep. I wish I could take a better stand, but I do feel like I have a stand later. So I'm going to look to survive in advance. But with the two, it was really just as simple as the Prime Power has been doing well with the meet, and I thought fit. But I'll have it on top when my Keeneland picks are out as well. So, yeah, three deep to start. The next two races have some debut runners who may or may not be dangerous. Unfortunately, we won't have a look at the board, the win odds anyway, but we will see the double will pays for race three going into race four. And I'm only using the experienced runners. On my ticket. Yeah, you're taking a stand against both of those Wesley Ward runners, which will help the prices of the two horses that I like outside of those two. But whenever I try to fade Wesley, it always <laughs> ends up biting me. So I'm including those two on my ticket, but I'm going a little bit deeper in here because I have some stronger opinions that I'm going with later on. The number two horse, though, is a bit of an interesting long shot, 30 to 1 on the morning line. This horse is turf sprinting for the first time. She has run in a turf route before and sprinted on the dirt. But this horse is a half to Momo, so the stakes based turf sprinter that used to run for Christophe Clement, now has switched barns, but has the success in the past to run um, against horses like Jackie's Warrior in his second start. So the pedigree is there for this one to appreciate the sprint distance and possibly on the turf as well. It hasn't run, you know, badly enough for me to completely toss at a bit of a price in here. Um, I can't take the four who really does make the most sense on buyer speed figures I, as a over 16 maiden. I just can't do it when there's, you know, fresh faces in here and others that are trying something new for the first time. And then the number nine horse as well is one that I wanted to include never at all. Uh, running decently well at Goldstream Park on the turf is now second off a layoff. Uh, really nice turn of foot on this horse in the replays that I watched. Almost getting there in five furlong sprints. Now gets to go five and a half, possibly maybe closing into a race that I think is going to have a pretty solid pace up front. All right. Uh, well, on the four, the, you know, one of those at three to one, I'd be, how can you use this horse? 15 to one, which I can't imagine I'll get, um, only because usually the way I handicap certain things kind of trigger, okay, I'm not the only one who's notice this or my software isn't the only one who have noticed this so that's probably a, a dream but i do think even half that is in the mix so i am on the four the nine interests me as well if the 14 draws in uh that would make my ticket the full 108 so i'm kind of it could end up being cheaper if that one's not there but yeah th this is a tough one and you know looking at the double will pays or would pays from race three maybe you 
in a situation where, gosh, Wesley Ward clearly is very live here. If I had some big price that I was really leaning on later, I would say, okay, I can use them, but my two singles are going to be the top choices in their races. So to me, this is the opportunity to maybe go against horses that are going to be on everyone's ticket because I think most people are going to want to use Ward on their pick six. Right. Um, and I get it, but just the way I structured it, that's one of the logicals I want to be against. Right. And I think I would say to someone that maybe is, you know, just going to the track for the day, wants to play in an expensive ticket and possibly have an opportunity to hit, you could probably maybe survive by just using those two if you wanted to just yeah, have a no, ticket for the day. But if you want to kind of go a little bit deeper here, have some better opinions later on, there's other horses that could possibly beat those two with them being like such unknowns, um, just making their first start. Yeah. And I mean, you know, with the pick six, if you ended up being super thin, like, man, I really like the chalks today. I mean, with the carryover and a race like this, where a lot of people go deep and they include various horses because, well, this is a competitive race. If you have a 16 or $32 ticket and you're leaning on the wards, that makes a lot more sense. When you start getting into the three-figure tickets and you already have a bunch of favorites, as I do later, uh, that's the stand I'm taking here. So similarly, in race number five, which is like three couple first-time starters, Brad Cox has one of them who caught my eye a little bit, but dug into the pedigree and just overall thought those who have run, uh, I think, could be in a better spot. Unfortunately, I felt that way on Saturday and Casa de Goat uh, ran off the screen in one of the more impressive debuts I've seen. I'm not worried about that here, though. So one, six, nine for me. Who do you got? Uh, this is where I'm taking a stand. I am going to go ahead and single the six. Midnight makes sense just because this horse is coming out of what I think is a pretty live race last time at Mahoning, your favorite track. One, second favorite. <laughs> no. This will not. Oh, okay. Home Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> One of the favorites. Favorite winner track. <laughs> anyway, this horse um, actually finished second on debut that day, and that was going the six for long distance. And Pistol, the horse that set the pace in there, who faded to finish fourth, actually came back and won at Keeneland the other day. Um, the winner of that race went on to face a pretty salty allowance group that included uh, Malibu Marie, Martime, the likes of those horses from the Brad Cox barn. The horse that finished um, third that day came back to finish second in her next start. So coming out of a very live race, it was only her first start. Now she gets a rider upgrade to uh, Louis Saez, and him and Eddie Keneally are hitting at a very high percentage at this Keeneland meet so far. So that's where I'm going to take a stand in here. Um, this horse should be, I want to say, second or third choice, even if it uh, gets bet down from the 92 morning line. And it was either that or spread significantly in here because the one looks possible. The first time started for Brett Cox. The number two looks possible. The nine looks possible. The eight is a half to mask parade. Mm. Um, but, you know, I kind of had to just take my shot and go with it. So singling the six in here. All right. I like it. I like it. I have the six on mine, one nine as well. She singled to the six. And then the last race we'll talk about, fourth leg of the pick six, the race number six, that is. Mm -hmm. Pick three starts here as well. Uh, cellist is a horse I feel like I've chased a bunch. Maybe a money burner. I'm thin enough throughout the ticket, though. Uh, I actually ended up putting on top. And if the 1A draws in, a little Alanyap as well, well, I think that one's a marginal contender, so only helps the chances of advancing if they're both in. I'm comfortable with Chellis. Also, I have uh, the 5 9, the 5. Uh, in particular, I should have written names down here. Skyro. Skyro, thank you. Uh, pretty sharp on the Brisnet speed rating, so that was sort of just playing the speed edge and sometimes being fast enough is good enough. Uh, so those are the three for me. How about you? I have the exact same three. This is the same oh. we agree completely. Right. And I think it's also interesting if Tango, Tango, Tango draws, does draw in here as well. Um, both shipping in uh, him and Skyro from Gulfstream Park. Gulfstream Park shippers have been performing pretty well at Keeneland. Uh, I have Skyro in here as well. Um, Floriform finished third last time out to um, – Cheryl Spite, you mm. know what that horse came back to do when the grade one makers mark mile. So price on this horse is going to be probably bet down significantly. But this horse was running well prior to that. That was the first start off the layoff. So uh, floor four makes the most sense in here, but wanted a little extra coverage just in case. All right. One five nine for us. So maybe after scratches, though, there might be an opportunity to 
pivot around this race and come up with a ticket I mean, together. yeah, possibly. Like, if we wanted to single chloroform. I would say I would single the, the midnight horse from the previous race. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So you already have singled, but that is my top pick. So, so if we did that, and then stand. if we singled the four in the last race as well, which we both have on the ticket, right. like we could certainly come up with something. Or different. multiple tickets where, yeah. like, two of the three have to win type yeah. of thing. That could we be could, something. We could do something here. Well, we'll see on Wednesday. Uh, our Twitter handles are beneath us, so you can follow along for updates. But in the meantime, let's take a final look at each of our tickets. And while you're looking at that, Sarah's is 96, mine is 108 before scratches. Like. Subscribe. Subscribe. And then go get your super screener. Absolutely. So you're all ready. Set it. <laughs> Steady and ready. <laughs> ready a set for the Kentucky Derby Super Screen. Sorry to say, I had to say it 500 million times for all those Kentucky Derby contenders videos. So you got it down. I got it. But down. even then, it's not, it's the alliteration. Buy it. That's what matters. Buy it. That's what matters for sure. All right. Well, appreciate your time. Hopefully, we'll bear fruit. That's what we like to say. Maybe pizza. Pizza. Ten thousand dollar hits or more here in the office, and you're on the hook for pizza. So. <laughs> Uh, that would be my pleasure to buy pizza. Oh, mine too. Hopefully we can get, maybe we can get there on our, uh, what did we say is Jeff Ruby's? Is that a hundred oh, thousand? Yeah. yeah that's so, years, so. Right. Because once you get Ron in there oh. with the wine, yes, the white wine, the white wine, with the multiple glasses per glass, more than the standard six <laughs> ounce pour. You need the six figs <laughs> for that for sure. All right. Well, that's enough of this. Pick six Wednesday, super screener now. Derby in a week and a half or so. Who's your top pick? Tis the bomb. Really? On top? On top. I mean, <laughs> what are we doing here if you're not trying to score on the Derby? Tis the bomb. You really think he's going to win? I think he is the best bet of the Derby, so I'm putting okay, him on you, top. So you think he's the best price for his win? Epicenter is the most likely winner. Right. But that's not the question. Fair enough. <laughs> Charge yeah. it. Yeah. But right. I feel like he's going to take a ton of money. Nah, you'll be fine. That video of his, the Derby Contender video, is getting but, a lot of views. I think a lot I of I mean, 12 are. to 1, you'll get it. I hope so. Yeah. Well, we get to talk about this Wednesday night. Yes, actually. The better setting. Career Journal and uh, Super Thank Screener. You. Like, subscribe. I think we Join us Wednesday. All right, that's it. Join us next time. Thanks.